everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a good suturing tutorial or demonstration, and so I want to uh, introduce you today to a technique called the figure of eight. First of all, though, if you're new to this channel, please go ahead and hit subscribe, hit like, hit that little bell thing so you get notifications. I really appreciate the support. But diving right in here, this, this suture technique that I'm going to demonstrate today is called the figure of eight. Now, you'll see why it gets that name. Uh, here in a minute as I demonstrate, but the figure of eight suture is a very common, uh, commonly used technique that is actually a variation of the horizontal mattress. And you'll see that it has some similarities to the horizontal mattress technique. Um, <clears throat> it also has some similarities, similarities to the simple interrupted technique. So if you haven't already seen my videos on vertical mattress or simple interrupted, please check those out as well. Um, now, if you've seen my horizontal mattress video, you, you, you likely already know that the, the horizontal mattress, excuse me, the horizontal mattress technique is not my favorite. I don't love it because it puts tension across longitudinally this way, and it's pretty easy to strangulate the skin and get it to pucker up like this. And so this variation of the horizontal mattress, the figure of eight, um, I prefer much more, um, and there's lots of different application of the figure of eight. Um, probably the strongest application or the most common application is using it as a good, strong hemostasis uh, suture where you're going to get good, strong uh, strength across the laceration this way or this way, or it might be a surgical incision. So for example, a lot of OBs use the figure of eight suture when they are closing the uterus after a cesarean section or other uh, types of gynecologic procedures. Um, we used it a lot in neurosurgery when doing uh, spinal, uh, spinal column surgeries and closing this very strong, deep fascia there in the spinal column. So figure of eight, good, strong suture for fascia as well as hemostasis okay, in, in very vascular tissue. So let me go ahead and demonstrate for you. So notice we're going to, again, enter the skin at 90 degrees like we always do when we're suturing, and we're going to uh, plunge down and then rotate our needle driver in our hands. Now, oftentimes this is going to be some kind of gaping tissue if we're talking about hemostasis or something like a uterus, and so we're going to uh, need to reclamp so that we can go to the other side and make sure that you go directly across, straight across the, the incision or the laceration, same depth in the tissue, and exit again at the, the same distance from the skin edges. Okay, so notice it's looking a lot like a very wide, simple interrupted suture at this point. And if we were doing a horizontal mattress, then what I would do is I would backload my needle, right? I would load it backhanded, because I'd be going back the other direction. But the, instead, this time, we're going to load the needle the same way we already had the needle loaded. And we're going to go back across the same direction, just down the, the laceration a little bit. So we're going to repeat the same thing we just did. Okay, so notice it's similar to simple interrupted. It's similar to a horizontal mattress, but it's kind of a combination of both. And so now that we've come across twice, you can see that the, it, it creates this angle, so it's not going perpendicular. And then when we tie these two ends, it creates that figure of eight. If you visualize the suture underneath the skin there, you, you'll see that it's a, a, the shape of an eight or an infinity sign, right? <clears throat> and so if we're talking about uh, skin, closing skin, like on a, a traumatic laceration, we want good hemostasis with a figure of eight, uh, then we'll probably do an instrument tie like I'm going to do here. Uh, but if we're, if we're tying deep fascia or, or something like the uterus after a cesarean section, most likely we're going to be doing this figure of eight with vicral suture, uh, an absorbable suture, and we'll be tying that off with, uh, with our hands with a surgeon's knot rather than an instrument tie. So I'll go ahead and instrument tie this though, and you see when I, when I pull on this, not only am I getting good tension across the laceration, but I'm getting good tension longitudinally as well. So it's kind of squeezing that area like this. And so uh, for that reason, this is considered a very good suture for helping with hemostasis if bleeding is a problem uh, at the, the 
the location, okay? Well, I didn't quite get it very tight on that second throw, but that's all right. You get the picture. <laughs> so make sure that you get good, nice tightness with uh, your figure of eight. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate again real quickly uh, with less talking. <laughs> and uh, you can see that one more time. So again, we're going to load our needle just like we would if we were doing a simple interrupted. Okay. Nice, big, deep, simple interrupted pass. We're going to go ahead and reload our needle the same way rather than backhanded like we would with a horizontal mattress. Passing through the tissue again, keeping my distance for both passes through the tissue pretty much the same. And then we're going to go ahead and tie. All right. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, I have many other suturing videos as well as other procedures and little mini lessons on uh, my channel. So please hit subscribe, hit like, follow along. Thank you very much.